Hi, we're going to talk about a heating curve for both cooling and heating. Every once in a while you'll get these uh, questions that if you make something hot and warm, what's well, going to be the final mass or uh, the final temperature, something like that. So let me show you how to do this. Here's our setup. So in this question, we have um, 250 mils, sorry, that's a two, <laughs> 250 mils of tea. Uh, is at 18.2 degrees C and we want to cool it down. So we pour this tea into a container that has 75 grams of ice at zero degrees C. Um, they give us the density of the tea. They're assuming that it's the same as water, one gram per mil. Uh, they're saying that the specific heat of tea is really close to water, 4.2 joules divided by gram times degree C. And then of course the heat of fusion. So that's going to be the energy required to melt ice or energy released when water freezes. It's 333 joules per gram. So you were thinking transfer of energy. Remember, energy always flows from hot to cold. So the energy from the T is going to go into that ice because that's the low energy. Um, so you're thinking the T, the energy goes into the ice, the T is releasing its energy, the ice absorbs that energy, and it's going to melt, so that's the endothermic. The T is going to give away exothermic, the ice is going to absorb endothermic. So this is how we write it. Remember, conservation of energy, we can't create or destroy energy. The amount of energy lost, released, exothermic, equals the amount of energy gained, absorbed, endothermic. So we are going to write um, the Q, so the energy of the T, and that's releasing, so I put a negative. The amount of energy released has to equal the amount of energy absorbed by the ice. Okay, so in my head, that's what I start thinking, is very first, where's the energy transferring? Hot to cold, what's happening? Now, second thing that I do is I draw our heating curve. Part of it's warming up, part of it's cooling down. So the part that's warming up the ice, we start at zero degrees C, and it is only going to melt. And I put an arrow to remind myself the direction that this is melting, okay? And then I have T, and the T is at 18.2 degrees C, and it's going to cool down. So it's a liquid, not changing phase, still gonna be in the liquid phase, but we're gonna cool it down to zero degrees C. So this is cooling down. So I draw the curve, and here's the reason why I draw it. I draw it so that I can label what formulas I have to use. When I'm melting, the Q to melt, remember Q fusion, is heat of fusion times mass. Well, that's my ice right here. I'm going to plug this in right there. Here, cooling down the liquid, Q of a liquid, specific heat of liquid, M delta T. Well, the liquid is the T. So I'm going to plug that formula in right here. Seeing it graphically, helps me make sense of all of this. I first know which way the heat's transferring, and then this helps me visualize what are the formulas that we're going to use. So now we can just plug in those formulas. Negative CM delta T, remember that's the T, equals heat of fusion times mass. And remember this is going to be mass of the ice. So at this point, we can just plug in. Um, so if my T has a density of one gram per mil, this would be 250 grams. Okay, we're gonna have negative 4.2 joules by a gram times degree C times 250, I'm gonna say there was a decimal on that, 250 grams times final temperature, zero degree C, oops, minus the initial temperature, degree C, which was 18.2 degrees C, equals, okay, so there's the T part, that's the energy that's going to be released, equals heat of fusion, 333 joules per gram times M. That's my unknown. I want to know, well, how much of this ice is going to melt to cool down that T to zero degrees C. So we plug everything in. Notice this, I wanna show you. The negative is going to cancel that negative, so you'll end up with a positive value. Um, so on this, when we have heating and cooling, even though I'm writing a heating curve, go ahead and be really, really careful with your units. Um, we end up with M, I believe it was 57, yep, 57 grams. 57 grams of ice are going 
to melt. Now they gave us 75 grams, so that means that I would have, what, 18 grams that are going of ice floating, and I'd have 57 grams that would have melted. Now, I do want to amend this just a little bit. They could have changed this. They could have said, hey, this ice is actually at negative five degrees. So right here, if they said that was negative five degrees C, how much ice is going to melt if you pour 250 grams of water or of tea onto 75 grams of ice? Here's how this would change. And this is why I draw my heating curves. Okay, I know exothermic is a T, the endothermic is going to be the, uh, the ice. Well, we melt at zero degrees C. So that means we'd have to warm up the ice from negative five to zero. There we go. And then um, add this T, and that T is going to cool down. So you warm up the ice, then you melt it. Look at this. It added an entirely um, new formula right there. You'd have Q of the solid equals C of solid, M delta T. You still have the Q of the fusion, HF times M, and then the T stays Q of liquid, specific heat of liquid times mass um, change in, in temperature. So this, to uh, warm up the ice, absorb that energy in the ice, it would be the heat of fusion came melting, but we would also have to, I add right here, this would be, um, I'm going to amend this for you. We would have to warm the ice and we'd have to melt the ice. So here would be the melting part and the warming part would be specific heat of solid mass times delta T. That's the importance of writing that heating curve. Make sure you write out those heating curves so you can see if you're warming, cooling, or changing phase. All right, good work and good luck.